Hi, I'm Rob and this is Gems of War. In this video, I'm going to show you three different treasure vault teams, really fast teams and how to get the most out of the treasure vault. It's gnomes, gnomes everywhere. The, there are basically increased chances of treasure gnomes and more vault keys each weekend, as it says. Now, vault keys give you the best loot, the best rewards in the game. So you get a bunch of these and you just maximize your chances to get the best loot possible. What'll happen is you'll play games and then the gnomes will come crashing into your game sometimes and you, de you defeat them as many as possible. They may drop a vault key. Store up those vault keys, don't open them yet. Save them till the event's ended and open them after. There's no point opening them now, opening them now. You're literally wasting time when you could be doing more of these battles and collecting more and more vault keys first. So save the vault keys, open them up when the event has ended. Right, now I'm going to show you three teams which are really, really fast and how to make the most out of this event. Got three teams. One is Super Speed, does require two Mythics. The next one is my pretty fast team, requires one Mythic. And the last one requires no Mythics whatsoever and does have distinct advantages over the other two teams. So hang around for that. The first one is really simple to use. It's Dust Devil, Iron Hawk, Iron Hawk, Greed. Now, Greed starts battle with, battles with full mana and gains an extra turn. That is the only thing that's important about that. He does gain you gold, but it's the speed element, that, which is why he's important. Iron Hawk, that third trait, deals five damage to all enemies when an ally casts a spell. Now, we've got two of these, so we'll be dealing ten damage to all enemies when an ally casts a spell. And Dust Devil, again, starts with full mana and deals five damage to all enemies and knock the first enemy to last position. So the combination of the damage that they do is enough to win the games on a lower level explore on a basic kingdom. So all we'll be doing is casting Greed, which we get an extra turn from, and then casting Dust Devil and we win the game. So I'll just show this in action now. You want to go to a low level explore. Recommend like Wild Plains, Sin of Mirage, uh, Bright Forest is a good one. All basic low level enemies. You want to start from level one explore and all we're going to be doing is like i say casting greed casting dust devil and we will win the game the reason why you don't want to go to the other kingdoms is you don't want a chance of there being a submerge or something like that or a barrier or a summon from some 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 enemies when they die they may get a chance of a summon and you don't want any of that so go to one of these kingdoms cinema mirage wild plains or bright forest and ignore ignore this Ignore this, that actually wastes time. In that, literally just two or three seconds, it may take you to go and get that, and you decide to go and get this. You may have wasted five seconds altogether. You actually waste time, you only gain like four or five gold every time you do that. And one of these games, when you win, as we see in this case, case we got 536 gold. So you waste a few seconds just going collecting that four match for four gold. And by the time you've done that, three or four times in different games you could have played another one of these games and got 500 odd gold it's a no-brainer to just ignore those four matches in these games you do not need them it's a complete waste of time wasting your time and wasting you money in gold in the game so cast greed cast dust devil the game is won let's finish off these last couple of sets and i'll show you the next team because i face it oh you know i get it not many people are going to have a double iron hawk this is very specific for this kind of event and Gnomapalooza. This same team works in the Gnomapalooza event as well. So you can activate Gnomapalooza and, you know, this is by far the fastest team for Gnomapalooza at the same time. All right, so there's that team. Now show the second one. Very similar to that one, but it's for people that have only got one Iron Hawk. All you do is basically swap out a Iron Hawk for a, a Dust Devil, stick in any weapon you like there, we're not going to use it. Um, and any class which you still need to raise to 100. And very similar to the last game, but all we're going to be doing is casting Dust Devil twice. So we'll cast Dust Devil at the start, the enemy will get their turn, we'll cast Dust Devil again and win the game. Really fast, really easy, and if you've only got one Iron Hawk, this is the way to do it. No, I've started on the wrong team. That was silly. I didn't look what I was doing. Let me go to the right team now. That was the super speed team. Right, I thought that was weird. <laughs> right, let's do it properly this time. So we just cast both Dust Devils. So, one Dust Devil. 
enemy has their turn, second dust devil. And the job is done. So it's just all about caning, explore level ones on, on this, just again and again and again. You can all those four matches, they're going to cost you gold in the game eventually. No point in getting the four matches. Just to keep on rinse and repeat. It's all about just repetition. Can get boring sometimes, I suppose, but, you know, it's part and parcel of it. If you want to collect as many keys as possible, you have to get used to doing this kind of grind now and again if you want to get the most out of the game. And the more you can do, the more vault keys you're going to end up with. The more vault keys you end up with, the more fantastic loot you end up getting. Right, so there's that team. Now I'll show the other team, which is does have advantages, like I say, over the other two. Now, the cool thing about this team is, again, you can have any weapon you like there when doing this event in, in first place, as long as it doesn't block Varan. So any brown weapon, any purple weapon, any brown and purple weapon, anything you like, as long as it isn't uh, blue or, or green. For this team, the Mirage Queen starts off with giving all elementals 50% mana, and Rowan is elemental, so she'll start off with 6 out of her required 12. Leprechaun explodes green gems as his spell and starts with full mana as well, and that is the main thing. Again, any class, you haven't got to 100 yet, just stick on any class you need to raise to 100. All we'll be doing on this is casting Leprechaun, casting Rowan, and we will win the game. The cool thing about this team is you're not restricted to the lower level kingdoms with the easier troops like Bright Forest and Wild Plains, like I said earlier, you can go to any one you like. Now, the reason why this is relevant is because if there's certain trait stones you require, then you can go to a specific kingdom and farm these at the same time. So it's, say, double handy. So if you go to your inventory and take a look at the trait stones that you need, do that by clicking your hero icon in the top left-hand corner, now, we've only got like 13 of them, 15 of them, only five of those, so that's going to probably be the last, yep, the lowest one. So, okay, so I want to collect Arcane Dark Trait Stones, for example. I click that, and then it shows you the two kingdoms, in this case, where you can get these from. So I'll go to Galvania, go explore there, explore level one, and now not only have I got the chance of getting the just click, pick the right team. Uh, chance of getting the gnome pop into there and drop a vault key, but I've also got a chance now of getting a trait stone that I need. So if you do require trait stones, this team is not going to be that much slower than the other ones. We've got an extra turn there anyway. So we cast Rowan now. The game is done. When I say you can go to any kingdom you like, it's still beneficial to avoid ones like Merlantis, where the enemy could be submerged, and that's going to slow you down, and other... Uh, certain kingdoms where somebody may start with barrier or get a summon, something like that. Something that's going to be annoying. You can even get four match at the start of a game with this team. And Rowan will be charged up straight away if you make sure you've got a plus two, plus two green on the uh, banners side of things. So you're another really, really quick team with extra benefits as well. You don't have to worry about any lingering uh, opponent being left behind on one or two health. That's not going to happen with this team. You can make sure of this as well if you're a lower level... Um, player by sticking on some extra medals of guard at the start of the game. That'll give plus eight to all troops, so that'll boost Varan, so stick three of them on at the beginning if you're a lower level player with Varan. But yeah, it's just literally cast Leprechaun, cast Varan. And again, I can't say it more times, but um, don't worry about actually opening the vault keys yet. Don't be tempted. Store them up first. Rewards you get from them are not going to change. It's more important to collect them first. You're wasting potential vault keys by actually opening them first. Spend as much time as you can playing this um, event first. Open the vault keys later. Whatever well, it is, three really quick teams and how to get the most out of this uh, this vault. One's for the next um, two days and 19 hours in my case. And make the most of it. It's the best loot in the game. There's the video. If you found it useful or helpful, be cool if you considered liking and subscribing because it really does help. But most of all, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye for now.